Okay guys, so welcome back to the implementation video of shoe shuffling. Now already taken the input in the number of shoe sizes, like number of uh, pairs we have in the sizes array, shoe size. The important thing to note here is that this array is in non-decreasing order or ascending order or it is sorted, right? So sorted is the most important part, frankly. Now the way I'm going to approach this uh, question is, first I'm going to create a permutation. First uh, I'm going to create a permutation. Uh, create a permutation such that p of i equals to i. So the first guy will be equal to 1, second guy equal to 2, and third guy equal to 3, and so on till n guy equals to n. And if a valid shuffling exists, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left rotate same shoe size groups by 1. Since I need a starting point, I'll create this permutation, which is basically my baseline, and then I'll rotate the same shoe size groups by 1 to get my valid shuffling. Of course, provided we don't have a unique shoe size, but that's a different story. For now, let's just assume uh, we don't have unique shoe sizes and uh, approach the equation, right? So let's just create our baseline then. So it will be just a vector of int only. I don't need to use long longs here because I don't think we are performing any additions, right? We just want to, if uh, we want to do some operation, it will be just rotation. So it will be n size array. But since this array is zero based and uh, a requested permutation is size one, the way it is going to work is uh, I'll have to assign like shuffling of i equals to i plus 1. So shuffling of 0 will be assigned 1, shuffling of 1 will be assigned 2. But all in all, what you are doing is you are setting the first guy to have the shoe size of 1, the second guy to have the shoe size of 2, third guy to be 3 and so on. So this is a baseline and I'll we are, are going to rotate the same shoe size groups by 1 right now. So let's do it. So what we want to do is I'll write it. I'll write the code with proper comments because I assume that a lot of you are watching this video just for the implementation part, right? So, okay. So once you see the code in future, you should be able to get it, right? So I want to left rotate same shoe size groups by one. That's what I want to do. And uh, if you are not familiar uh, like with how this uh, rotation operation works, uh, frankly, you don't need to know it because we are going to use STL here. But uh, just for your uh, knowledge, I'll tell you that if you want to rotate a group of K elements, it takes uh, only order of K time. Now, how like why like it might seem vague to you but that since this is not the point of this video you will have to believe me that if you want to rotate a group of k elements it only takes order of k time now this is a very fundamental problem like it's a you can say a school level problem uh, when you just start out your programming journey not even cp journey so i hope that you know this like there is one way which works by reversing the array elements right so if you want to rotate a group of k elements by some like let's say by one only it only takes order of k time Right. So I assume that you know this. If you don't know it, like I'll probably link a blog or something or there are a lot of amazing tutorials on YouTube which explain this school level problem. So the point is to rotate a group of k elements is only take order of k time. So all in all, uh, even if we rotate all the groups, like uh, we rotate uh, all the possible groups in our array, the total time complexity will be still order of k. And it also doesn't consume any space. Okay, No extra space is required. So all in all, the total time complex will be simply order of n because total elements are n, right? So the approach that we are going to implement here is going to consume uh, just order of n time. And this is pretty well in our constraints, right? Of uh, I guess 1e5 for the constraints. So yeah, that's about the rotate. So I'll initialize a pointer i equals to 0. So this guy will go through all the groups individually and we are going to rotate a group uh, cyclically left by 1. Right, so while i is less than n, we have not crossed the bounds. What I'm gonna first uh, take is uh, what is the size of the current group? Okay, so first uh, take hold of the current size of the group. So this will be shoe size for current group. Okay, now what we want to do is uh, we want to find bounds of where this uh, shoe size is existing. Right, so you have to first find the bounds. What is the first occurrence of first occurrence of this shoe size and what is the last occurrence of shoe size because then only we are going to rotate it, right? Okay, fine. So we will need two pointers here or two index variables here, start and end. Okay, so what is the point of this start and end? Uh, current size uh, is in, this uh, shoe size is present in start to end. Now it frankly is your implementation choice whether you want this bound to be strict or to be like this, like uh, and can point to one past the last occurrence and frankly I am gonna choose this n to point to one past the last occurrence why uh, because it eases down the implementation uh, because the way the rotate function works so for now you will have to 
believe me that this is how you are going to consider the end. But even if you want to do this, you can do it. Okay. And you will be able to change the code to address this case when start, uh, like when current size uh, lies in start and end. But I am going to implement uh, by considering when end points one past the last occurrence of current sh shoe size, right? I'll be happy if someone can post uh, this version in the comment section after this video. But yeah, for now, let's uh, make sure that. Uh, start points to the first occurrence of current size right and end points to one past one past the last occurrence of current size now start is pretty simple right uh, start will be simply i this is the first occurrence of current size what will be end end is interesting uh, let's just start uh, end with i and what I'll do is while end is less than n, we didn't go out of bounds. And and shoe size of end equal equals to current size. I'll increment n plus plus. Simple, right? So uh, after this loop ends, end will point to one past the last occurrence of shoe size. Okay. Now, uh, what if you have a unique shoe size? If you have a unique shoe size, like if you have a unique shoe size, uh, shoe size. If you have a unique shoe size that is let's say you just have the six and then seven seven what will happen is start will point to this this index whatever this guy has and end will just point to one past it so all in order what i'm trying to say is if start is equal equal to end minus one then we have a unique shoe size like we have a unique shoe size in this case we'll just print minus one and will return return means uh, will return out of the solve function and this test case is done then we'll move to the next test case fine so yeah that is the case that we have handled when we have a unique shoe size but if we don't have a unique shoe size then we have got a group right so now rotate this group right rotate this group by left in other words uh, cyclically cyclically rotate by one in left direction right left direction or i guess uh, it's anti clockwise right so yeah whatever way you are going to remember it fine so one thing remains now we have to cyclically rotate this group right how are you going to do it and that's when uh, this uh, rotate function comes into picture so the way rotate function works in stl is uh, why i have specifically chosen left rotation here is for the same reason that rotate performs left rotation so the rotate stl takes three arguments it's the iterator to the first guy iterator to the middle guy and an iterator uh, to one past the last guy <laughs> that's why we have chosen this end uh, which points to one past the last occurrence right so rotate takes three arguments so for example let's say these are array and if first value is pointing to the first guy m is pointing to the third guy and e is pointing to the end area of end right so area of end if you remember it points to one past the last guy right so this is a very basic c plus plus knowledge that the array of end so what i'm trying to say is array dot end uh, points to the one position past the last guy right so this i hope you remember so now if i give this like if i give these three values to rotate in this case so in this case okay so what i'm trying to say is if i call rotate here what will happen is so it takes three arguments right the iterator to the first guy iterator to the middle guy and iterator iterator to the one past the last guy what it's gonna do is uh it's gonna make sure that this middle guy becomes the first guy. So it's gonna take this three, four, five. It's gonna take this three, four, five. Put it at the first. It's gonna take this one, two, and put it at the last. All in all, it performed like a cyclic rotation of this, right? So these two elements were pushed back. So cyclic rotation of two happened here, right? So it cyclically uh, rotated left by two, right? So left cyclic rotation happened by two. In simple words. It made sure the middle element became the first. So everything after the middle element came here and these things were pushed back. So in this case, let's say we have a group, if you have a group and we want to cyclically rotate it by one. So what will, what, what will be the F, M and E? F will be the first guy, of course. M will be the second guy because we want the, we just want to cyclically rotate by one, right? So M will be the second guy. And what will be E? E will be one past the last occurrence of this shoe size right so if you have let's say one more six here e will point to one past the last so now if you call rotate in this version what will happen is 
this six will go at the back or in other words these three six will come at the first and this six will go at the end all in all you have cyclically rotated the array by one in left direction so i'll repeat myself again i want to call rotate here in a way that the first guy will be what shuffling dot begin plus start so it will point to the first occurrence it will point the first occurrence of this current shoe size and what should be the middle guy that is which is gonna come first it should be the shuffling dot begin shuffling dot begin plus start plus one because i want the second guy to become the new first guy right in other words cyclically rotate by one and what should be the last last should be one past the last occurrence so what will that be i already calculated one past the last occurrence so it will be shuffling dot begin plus end pretty simple so i'll quickly summarize what you have done uh, we'll start a journey from the first group i'll take out the value for current group i'll find the uh, bounds for this shoe size first occurrence and one past the last occurrence and uh, if the shoe size is not unique i'm going to rotate it cyclically by one in left direction that's what this guy is doing right so that's the rotate function that i want to discuss and now you can move on to the next group move to next group now where is the next group so make i point to end right because end was anyway pointing to one past the last occurrence so make i point to end and it is going to go to the end and now after this loop has ended you have considered all the groups and provided you have not returned you don't have a unique shoe size the shuffling array contains a valid shuffling shuffling has a valid shuffling fine so we'll just print it for auto s shuffling uh, c out s space followed by a new line uh, no the space right and in the end you can print a new line fine so yeah that's about uh, the implementation i hope you got something out of this video i'll quickly run it and see if it works it seems to be working uh, because see what it has done is it has cyclically rotated this array by one so you are getting two three four five one and since uh, you have unique elements here frankly all elements are unique you are getting minus one so i'll quickly submit it and see if it works yeah, it works uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one